Hey guys, I am just sitting here after a pretty busy morning and also my hair is wet from a shower so you're going to have to excuse the way it looks. Um, I've got Ninja <clears throat> cuddling under my blanket right now too. Um, but yeah, I have a riding lesson at 7am tomorrow morning so I'm just kind of taking it easy because uh, i got to be up at like 5.50. <laughs> but I did it to myself. But um, anyway, that's not the point of today's video. The point of today's video is that today, June 5th, marks one year of me living in Florida. Now, you guys know, back all the way back in 2018, I was kind of split between the two places. Um, I spent more time in Arkansas than I did in Florida, except for the weird year that was 2020. Um, but I went back and forth, but I, you know, Arkansas was still the place I spent most of my time, the place that I had all my doctors and everything. Well, last year that all changed because um, after my grandpa passed away in February um my mom that the whole reason she was staying there was for my grandpa so uh, my mom decided that she was going to move to Florida and by product I was going to move to Florida not just back and forth to visit my dad and be with family but permanently move to Florida and um that was to take place in July so actually when I came back in June we had an inkling of an idea that she was going to do it at some point but we didn't know exactly when so when I came back in June, I was actually planning on going back to Arkansas in about three weeks. Um, I came back this day because Yachty, our dog, if you haven't been around a while, our, our beagle, um, he was having surgery the next day. And because my dad and my brother worked, somebody needed to be able to keep an eye on the dog. So that's the whole reason why I came back on June 5th. Um, but I was planning on going back to Arkansas at the beginning of July. Well circumstances changed I was here the dog got surgery everything went well and I don't know exactly when it was but it wasn't long after I got back maybe just like a week or two I ended up with pneumonia that ended up with sepsis so I there was no possible way for me to go back to Arkansas um, at that point I was in the hospital for about 10 days on IV antibiotics and then I was on oral antibiotics for another like week and a half it ended up being almost like three weeks of antibiotics between oral and IV and uh, there was just no way for me to fly back. So my mom made the decision that she was gonna move around my birthday, which was July 22nd. And because of the whole sepsis and pneumonia stuff, there was just no way to go back. So June 5th, even though it wasn't technically supposed to be, it ended up being the day that I officially moved to Florida. And it's been such a, such a crazy year um, a lot of, there was a lot of loss, um, leaving my childhood home. We moved into that house, um, which I can kind of say it now because I don't live there anymore, so it's not, like, dangerous anymore. We lived in Sherwood, Arkansas, um, and it was way out in the country. Um, if you actually know where Olmstead, Arkansas is, that was the place specifically. Um, and we moved there from BB, Arkansas in 2000 I think so I was very young I was like two maybe not even two years old yet so that house was the house I grew up in um the house that I lived in for 23 some odd years um so it was very weird to leave it and then it was very weird to leave the horses now you know Blondie unfortunately passed away in 2022 but Diamond Matt you know they were all still there so it was very hard to leave the horses that I'd been with since 2016 and it was, a, it was an adjustment, mostly the biggest adjustment was not the house, was not the horses. It was throwing myself into another CF team because I had been at Arkansas Children's Hospital and then I was at UIMS straight out of Children's Hospital. Now I did have a stint, and this is probably what jaded me a little bit. I did have a stint when I went to Cedarville where I was at, I think it was like Ohio Children's Hospital or something. I'm pretty sure it was a Children's Hospital. I'm not entirely sure, but it was some CF program in Ohio. And any single time I went there, they tried to put me in the hospital. Every single solitary time, they wouldn't listen to anything. They just tried to put me in the hospital. So that got very, you know, just jaded against CF teams that didn't know me. So I made the switch um, from that hospital to the hospital here, which is Tampa General. And the cool thing about Tampa General is they're actually the number one CF team in the entire United States so that's pretty cool um I was still jaded I was still nervous because 
these people don't know me. They, they have my medical records, but medical records are different than looking at the person in front of you. Um, now, I will say as far as the cystic fibrosis side of things, they've been phenomenal. I have zero regrets about switching CF teams. I actually feel like I get better care here. Not that I got bad care in Arkansas, but I feel like I get better care here than I did there. Um, super helpful, super great. Um, I love my new CF team. It has been nothing but a positive. The endocrine side of things has been not that. Um, I had an endocrinologist in Arkansas that I really liked. He seemed to get me, you know, reactive hypoglycemia is a little bit different than diabetes, so it's not as well known, but he seemed to understand. And um, I got an endocrine here in January of this year, or yeah, January of this year. No, I saw him, I'm getting confused. I saw him in August of last year. I didn't like him very much. He didn't really listen. And it just it was not a good fit. Um, he retired in January of this year. That's what I was getting confused about. And I have been endocrineless since then. But I have one, uh, an appointment with a new endocrine on August 5th. And I hope that that will uh, go a little bit better than August 4th or 5th, I forget. It'll go a little bit better. And hopefully then all that will be smoothed out as well. So endocrine's been not a plus, but CF has been a plus. Um, and yeah, it's I was still dealing with a lot of health issues within the past year uh, uh, from COVID. You know, I it took me forever to recover from COVID. And now I've been out of the hospital the longest I've been in a long time. I've been out of the hospital for, let's see, February, March, March, April, April, May, May, June, four months, um, which is the longest I've been. So that's good. And, uh, yeah, I did, there's so much plus of having my mom a lot closer. You know, she lives an hour away from us, or not even an hour, more like 40 minutes away from us instead of 16 hours away. You know, it's nice to have the entire family in one state for the first time in ever um, since we were kids. And uh, so that's been, that's been a major, major plus. And even getting horses back in my life now, you know, I had this big gap after I left Arkansas where I didn't have horses. Um, but I found a stable here that I really like. And like I said, I have a riding lesson again tomorrow. So um, I feel like I feel like I'm settled in. I still miss Arkansas. I still miss the country. I'll forever be a country girl. You know, we are not in the country. We are in an apartment complex that is not in the city, but it's not in the country either. Um, and so I'll forever, you know, like that, miss that. But I feel like I'm settled in. Um, I find it funny how I, Florida is just home to me and for everybody else, it's a vacation state, but for me, I, I want to go to the mountains or somewhere cold, take me to Alaska. Like, um, but yeah, so that was a long winded way of saying here's to one year in Florida and just moving around. <laughs> Can you see her little nose? See it? Oh, sorry about that. Um, so that was a long-winded way of saying, here's to one year in Florida, here's to hopefully many more, and uh, it's crazy. It's like the first year of this new chapter in my life has been completed, and uh, we're on to the next one.